Church family, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Happy third Sunday to you here. This is April the 19th, April the 19th, 2020. And we invite you to come on in as we worship our God, even from our virtual sanctuary here at 31st Street Baptist Church. Let's go to God in prayer as we begin this worship experience. God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the opportunity that is ours to worship you from wherever we are, whether we are on conference call or Facebook on YouTube. We thank you that you provide for us this technology for the family to join together in this time of word and worship. Now I pray, oh God, that you would be with us. Be with us as we sing and as we worship you, oh God. Be with us, oh God, in the word of God that will come forth, oh God. Allow us even to be together as it relates to giving back unto you what you have required of us. We love you and we praise you. We ask that you would consecrate this time of worship and word in Jesus' name. Our soul says amen. Welcome in. We welcome all of you all who are here on Facebook, all of you who are here on YouTube, those who are on the conference call. We're glad that you're here as we begin to celebrate our Lord again on this third Sunday. He is Lord. He is Lord.
thank you to the music ministry for the opportunity to worship God in this way. There's a word from the Lord for us today. It comes to us from the same Gospel of John that we were in on Resurrection Sunday. If you were with us last week, you know we were in John chapter 20, verse 1 through 18. John chapter 20, verse 1 through 18. And we were in this book, and our text and our title for last week was They Were Wrong. They Were Wrong. So I want to begin a series even for these next few weeks leading into our Mother's Day experience. Now that Jesus is up, now that Jesus is raised from the grave and, from the grave and they are sure about the fact that he is alive, the question for us and the question for those believers at this time is, now what? Now what? So we're starting a new series today entitled, Now What? Now I want to go back to John, John chapter 20. We'll pick up where we left off last week. John chapter 20, beginning at verse number 19. You have it with you. Type, I've got it in the comment section. Would you stand if you're at home, whatever the case may be, so that we can reverence the word of the Lord. John chapter 20, verse 19 through 23. So we begin this Now What series today. It reads like this from the New International Version. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Again, our key verse for today is verse 19, John chapter 20, verse 19. It reads this way, on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked, let the church say doors locked, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them. So the time that is ours to share together on this third Sunday, I want to preach from the subject lessons from lockdown. Lessons from lockdown. The Bible says when they were together with the doors locked for fear, Jesus came and stood among them. Lessons from lockdown. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day and for this opportunity to proclaim your gospel. Thank you that you continue to use one whose righteousness is but a filthy rag to be an instrument of your word. Now I pray that you would give me preaching power. Would you clear my mind? Would you stand in my body, oh God, that I might proclaim your gospel one more time. And as we sit in anticipation of your word, God, would you open our ears and hearts that we might be receptive to what your spirit has to say. For ultimately, God, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Lessons from lockdown. Lessons from lockdown. I am losing my mind. That was the report from one of my sisters in the faith and fellowship as she reflected on how this temporary season of stay home, work safe, locked door living was affecting her. Being a working woman with a young child who was no longer able to go to their normal daycare. She no longer has access to her normal gym routine. No outlet like the movies or bowling alley to blow off steam. And no bar for which she could engage in um, communion. Among other believers and non-believers after a long week's work. And her only response was, I'm losing my mind. While I have certainly been looking for ways not to lose it, I've also, family, been thinking through what lessons can be learned in this season together. I know that it is easy for us to, to lose it when we are stuck in the house, when we are looking at some folks who we haven't looked at this often, this much in a long time. We can lose it when the things that we are normally excited about doing seem to be taken away from us. We don't have the opportunity to be in fellowship with one another. It can cause you to lose it when you have to deal with that spouse that you only kind of like for a little while with those children that 
kind of drive you crazy and those grains that just won't sit down when you tell them to sit down. You can lose it in lockdown. Now I've been asking the question, what, what are some lessons in lockdown? Despite these unprecedented times of fear and anxiety and conflicting reports and death and uncertainty of when it will be safe to come back outside, I'm still in search of the answer to the same question. What is Jesus trying to show us, to teach us, to give us, even while we are huddled together inside, behind locked doors? What lessons can be learned from the Lord, even in a time of lockdown? And I think we can find some clues from the story of these locked down believers in John chapter 20, verse 19 through 23, that prior to the text, the disciples have endured a debilitating and traumatic communal experience as their Lord and leader, Jesus Christ, was crucified, was publicly executed and left to hang as an example by the Roman Empire. The goal of the Roman Empire's crucifixion was to show to Jesus' followers and family that death was the end for anyone who defied their authority, and if Jesus could die as a result of his defiance, the disciples knew uh, so could they. And this high-profile murder and death of their leader leads them to a state of panic, to a state of concern and a state of fear that what happened to him could happen to them. And to prevent this kind of state-ordered execution and death among the believers from spreading there, these disciples call for a period of lockdown. When we arrive at our text for today in John chapter 20, verse 19, the Bible says that all of the disciples were together, locked into their homes for fear of the possibility of death that could await them if they stepped outside of their doors. They are confused by conflicting reports about the death toll, as some are saying Jesus is most certainly dead, while Mary Magdalene is telling others that he has recovered from his ordeal with Corona, I mean at Calvary and is alive. And in the midst of all of this, with the believers on the edge of losing their minds, Jesus shows up. And I believe if we take a few minutes examining the text, we can leave with some lessons from lockdown. If you'll give me a quick pre, I promise you'll be done with me. The first lesson that we learn from lockdown in this text is that when we are in a state of lockdown, you have to prioritize your peace. Will you turn to somebody, will you type in the comment section and say prioritize your peace? You have to prioritize peace. It's right there in the text. Verse 19 through 21, it says, on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sent Sending you. The text says that after this traumatic season of death that the disciples have just experienced and after the confusing reports that are circulating around the death toll and Jesus' whereabouts, Jesus has a keen sense of where his disciples are. They love Jesus and are certainly people of faith, but there is a fog of fear, according to verse number 19, of what may await them if they go back outside of the house and certainly some level of skepticism about the Jesus who they were now talking to inside of the lockdown and though Jesus has much to discuss with them and to prepare them for and to give them Jesus says to them the first thing you need from me in this crazy and scary time is the assurance of peace peace be with you, Jesus says in verse 19, and it's so important that he doesn't just say it one time, he doesn't just leave with peace, but he repeats his call in verse 21, again Jesus said, peace with you, in my imagination, Jesus takes on the persona of a proficient Baptist preacher and essentially says to this congregation of locked in disciples y'all don't hear me, that in these times, locked down with the fog of 
fear, uncertainty, anxiety, and skepticism confining my people in place. Jesus teaches us to prioritize our peace. And when Jesus proclaims peace to this group of locked in believers in John chapter 20, it is a weighty idea that the word for peace here in the text is a word called irene, and it refers to peace and quietness, but literally it refers to joining something together to a whole. That Jesus is saying in this frantic and frustrating season of lockdown, my desire is not that you would be fractured in your emotions. My desire is not that you would be fractured in your provision or fractured in your relationship, but my desire is that you would experience wellness and that you would be whole in this season of lockdown. And the lesson to the lockdown church in 2020 in verses 19 through 21 is that God's desire and God provides a peace for us in this season that prioritizes our health and our wholeness. And when the Lord provides that in the midst of a panic season, make no apologies for doing what you have to do to preserve your peace. I'll admit it, I want to stay informed, but there are just some days I can't watch the news and hear the retelling of the statistics and the stats because I'm prioritizing my peace. To my younger saints, I love hip-hop, and I can turn up to Meg the Stallion when the occasion is right, but these days I'm listening to less reminders that I'm a savage and more music that's going to feed my spirit because I'm prioritizing my peace. That in this season of lockdown, there are some conversations that I won't entertain, some bait that I won't bite on, some arguments that I won't give energy, some messages that are left on red, some phone calls that won't get returned, some folks that I won't FaceTime because I'm prioritizing my peace. And my prayer for somebody tuned in today is that you will experience the peace and the wholeness of God in this season. That God will keep your mind and your heart. That God will keep your body and your beliefs. That God will keep your money and your marriage. That God will keep your grocery list and your grandkids. That God will keep your headspace and your health. Where is Marvin Seth and Isaiah when I need them? We serve a God that will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Will somebody type in the comment section and just say prioritize your peace? First lesson that comes from lockdown for these believers is to prioritize your peace. But the second lesson that we learn is that in this text is that you can see the Savior through the scars. Will somebody type in the comment section, somebody holler on the conference call line. You can see the Savior through the scars. Verse number 19 through 20, on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And after he said this, here it is, family, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. The text says that after Jesus showed up in the midst of the disciples who had been locked up and locked in for an undisclosed period of time for fear of their safety on the outside, that he first helps them to prioritize peace in this season. Obviously, they were in conversation with, they were looking at Jesus while he stood among them and spoke to them about peace. But there is a nuance in the text that shouts me out of my shoes because verse 20 indicates that it's only after he shows them his hand and his side, the places that bore the scars of his cavalry experience, that they now saw the Lord and are overjoyed. That they may have been conversing and even looking at Jesus for some time while peace was being prioritized, but they don't see him and know that it's him for sure until they have a chance to see 
see the scars. That this is instructive for the believers that are locked up in homes and essential places of businesses all around this city and country and in this world. There are some of us who are looking for God and are even conversing and talking to God. But your certainty around the character and the capability of the Savior is shallow because while you've gotten to look at the Lord, you only know him in shout worthy and peaceful scenes of your life. You can identify the presence of the Lord when God is performing miracles, when all of your bills are paid, when your children and your grandchildren seem to be on the right track, when your relationship is solid and your savings are full. But I want to argue that to only know the Lord in those scenes and seasons leads you to an anemic certainty and scope about the power and the character of the Lord. But the text reminds us that despite how much you may be looking at the Lord or even talking to the Lord, you may not know for sure who the Lord is until you see some scars. That sometimes it's not until you are exposed to or have to endure and replay seasons of pain and loss and trauma and hurt and fear that you really know for sure who the Lord really is. Is there anybody besides me that can testify? I thought I knew who the Lord was when I was shouting about God's work in my life, but I didn't know for sure who the Lord was until I saw some scars. It was when I was scarred by the ill effects of a sickness that I didn't expect and couldn't get rid of, that disease that left me in debilitating pain, that's when I learned for sure that God was a healer. It was when I was scarred by the loss of that job, when my money ran out, when I was depleting my retirement and my rainy day fund, that's when I found out for sure that the Lord will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. It was when I was scarred by my boo, my bae, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my husband, my wife, when I went through that season of marital difficulty and divorce, that I found out for sure that the Lord meant it when he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, that it is when I was scarred by the loss of my brother, my sister, my mother, my father, my grandparent, my child, or my friend, that I found out for sure, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. It is when I was scarred by abuse and betrayal, when my heart was broken, when my expectations were trampled on, that I found out for sure that the Lord is a restorer of my soul, that the Lord will wipe away every tear from my eye, that in time the Lord will turn my mourning into dancing. Is there anybody in the building and anybody that's on camera right now who can testify and holler back at your boy and say, I didn't learn for sure who God was in shop-worthy seasons, but I know for sure who he was when I saw some scars. The lesson we received from these locked-in believers in John 20, number one is to prioritize peace in this season of lockup. And secondly, to see the Savior through scars. But the last thing we've got to learn in this text, and then I'm going to let you go back to your brunch at the house, is that in the midst of lockdown, you have to be ready to receive. When you type in the comment section and say, be ready to receive something from the Lord. Verse 21 through 23 says, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins will be forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they will not be forgiven. The last thing the text teaches us is that after Jesus helps them with this area of resourcing and responsibility, he, after helping them to prioritize peace and sharing his scars with them. Jesus says, now there are a few things that I want to give you while you are here in lockdown that will prepare you for what's going to happen when you come outside again. And there are three quick things that Jesus gives them that we too need
need to be ready to receive in the midst of lockdown. First, even from this place of lockdown, the Lord sets them up with a new assignment. Somebody type a new assignment. Jesus said that in one season you were walking and learning from me as I poured into you the truths, the character and the power of God but now I'm sending you out to now pour out and teach and heal and set free others in my name that even in their period of lockdown they received a new assignment and just like Jesus does with his disciples in lockdown in John 20 I believe that Jesus is preparing to provide some new assignments for his disciples who are locked down in 2020. I believe that in this season, if we are listening and ready to receive, the Lord is still issuing new assignments to work, serve, and to create in the midst of lockdown. That even from lockdown, the Lord is providing new visions and dreams for what our world, our churches, our families can ultimately be on the other side of of this season of separation. Uh, that even in lockdown, the Lord is providing the spark for new businesses uh, that can change or help us uh, to recalibrate how the world will look uh, on the other side of this period of lockdown. Uh, that the Lord is providing new ministries uh, and new methods of how to minister to the masses uh, in this technological age. Uh, new calls on our lives uh, and areas of exploration and expertise. Uh, and it's up to us uh, to be listening uh, when the Lord speaks. When you elbow somebody in your house uh, and type in the comment section and say, are you listening uh, for your assignment? Are you listening uh, for your assignment? The Lord gives them first a new assignment. Uh, but the disciples also receive uh, a fresh anointing. Uh, the Bible says that after Jesus declares uh, that he is sending out his disciples, uh, he breathes on them. Uh, or as the Greek implied, he blew onto them. Remnants, of, it's reminiscent of when God breathes into man the breath of life and says to him, receive the Holy Spirit. Now in a few weeks we're going to be talking and dealing more with this precious and powerful Holy Spirit. But until then, can I give you the clip note version about what they receive? That when Jesus breathes on them such that they may receive the Holy Ghost, they are receiving perception. They are receiving parameters uh, and they are receiving power. Uh, they receive perception uh, because the Holy Ghost is our guidance. Uh, the Spirit tells us where to go uh, when we don't know the way. Uh, but they also receive parameters uh, because the Holy Spirit will convict us uh, and keep us in bounds uh, when we're moving outside of the will uh, and the way of God. Uh, but they also receive power. Let the church say power uh, because the Holy Spirit gives us power uh, to do the things that we would not be able to do uh, in our own strength uh, and in our own capabilities uh, and in this season of lockdown uh, my prayer for every, every member uh, of the 31st Street Baptist Church uh, and all our family around the world uh, is that you will receive a fresh anointing uh, of the Holy Spirit of God uh, that you might walk with new perspective, uh, that you be kept with new parameters uh, but ultimately that the Spirit uh, would give you power, uh, Holy Ghost power, uh, to do what you never would have been able to do uh, in your own strength uh, and in your own power. Uh, and not only does Jesus uh, set them up to receive a new assignment, uh, and not only does Jesus uh, provide them with a fresh anointing uh, by breathing into them the Holy Spirit of God, uh, but Jesus concludes uh, by giving them uh, new authority. Uh, Jesus says, now uh, that you have a new assignment and now that you have fresh anointing you have the authority that previously only I had he gives them the authority to forgive sins as he has saying that if you forgive anyone's sins their sins will be forgiven if you do not forgive them they will not be forgiven and as I shut down the message today I pray in this season that God will give us the grace and the grounding to come out of our season of lockdown operating in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ.
Christ. Is there anybody like me who says when we come out of this season of lockdown, I want to walk in authority. I want the authority to lay hands on the sick and the disease and healing takes place. I want the authority to speak to every wind and storm that comes against our families, comes against our church, comes against our city, and say, peace be still, and the storm has to cease. I want the authority to drive out the demonic when it rears its ugly head in the lives of our children and our children's children, on my job and in my house and in my church. And we can do this not only through the power of Almighty God, but in verse 19 it says that the disciples were all in lockdown together. Somebody type together. And if we're going to make it and maximize what God is doing in this season, we got to be in this thing together. This is not the season for silly divisions. This is not the season for pettiness. This is not the season for spats and clicks and crews. But we all are in this together. Somebody type and say we're in it together. And the Bible says that we're two or three are gathered together in my name. God will dwell in the midst. And that's where that where unity is. God will command a blessing. Say to whoever's in your house, type in the comments. We're in this together. Let's pray together. Let's worship together. Let's plan together. Let's reason together. Let's give together. Let's feel the need together. Let's band together. Let's work together. Let's stay together and see what the Lord will do. I'm done with the sermon, but there's anybody that believes that I into the hearts of men and women what the Lord will do on the other side of lockdown if we stay together. Say so they are together in lockdown. In the midst of it, Jesus says, there's some things I want you to receive even now, even behind closed doors in this season. I want you to receive a new assignment. I want you to receive a brand new anointing that'll give you perspective and parameters and power. And when you get that, when you get that, you'll be able to walk in new authority. You'll be able to tread on the head of serpents and devils and demons. That when you get that kind of anointing, that kind of authority, even when the shadow shows up in a place, things have to shift. And I believe. God is able to do it even in this season of lockdown. And if you agree, if you believe it, will you just say hallelujah right there in your home? Will you type hallelujah right there on Facebook, right there on YouTube? I believe we can do it through the power of God. And if we stay together, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Family, there may be somebody here today who says, I'm here. I'm, I'm listening to this conference call. I'm on Facebook, I'm on YouTube, but I don't yet have a relationship with this Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this Lord that will meet you in the midst of lockdown. If that's you, my brother and sister, I want to invite you to come. You can't come into these doors physically, but I want to invite you to type something in the comment section to let us know you want to be connected with God. Send us an email at info at 31sbc.org so that we know that you desire a relationship with our Christ or with this church community. I come to tell you, your life will never be the same together. I need you. You need me. We're all part of the family. And we're better when we're together. So that's you, my brother, my sister. Will you come? As we sing this great song of the church, this is your time. Let us know. Even in the comment section, let us know. As we sing a bit, this is your invitation to the sound. Tell them what you
invitation. There's one that desires to join with our Christ or with this church community. You have that opportunity. Send us an email. Send us a comment so that we know that you want to be connected. And we'll connect you even on this week. I want to thank you, church family. I want to thank you because I've asked you throughout this last month and some change that we would lean on these three pillars. I'd ask you to stay calm. God is still in control. We have rich leadership here at the church. I've asked you to stay connected, and you're doing that through our Facebook, through our YouTube, through our conference call, and I pray that you continue to stay connected, but you have also remained committed, and I thank you for those that have been able to continue to provide your gifts, your tithes, your offering to the work of the Lord here at the University of Baptist Church, and there are opportunities for you to be committed even on today. Uh, we know that there are three ways for us to give, three ways for us to give. You can give by sending your contribution through the mail. We will receive it in that way. You can send it to 823 North 31st Street, Richmond, Virginia, but we'll receive your contributions through the mail. Or we have our drive-through, drive-by, drive-in, drop-off opportunity. You can come to the church from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. And we'll receive your gifts in that way. You don't have to get out of your car. We want to make sure that you're safe. We want to make sure that you're well. Then for those of you like me, you want to give through your phone. I've been giving through our GiveLify app. So I want you to take the opportunity, if you have a smart device, you have a phone, you have an iPad, a tablet, whatever the case may be, go to the App Store, download the GiveLify application, and you have the opportunity even now to give online. You set up a profile one time, the, the giving is easy through there. So I want to thank you, and this is our opportunity to pause and to take the opportunity to give back to God a portion of what God has given to us. Even after this worship experience is over, from 11.30 to 12.30 p.m., you can come by the church, you can drop off your gifts then. We'll be happy to receive them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we go. Listen, I'm so glad that you tuned in. I'm glad that you were a part of this virtual experience here in worship on this third Sunday of the month of April. We're grateful for you. And until we meet again, we have Bible study on Wednesday, 7 o'clock. We want you to be there. And until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause God's face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of the Lord's countenance upon you give you God's peace and you're going out and you're coming in and you're laboring in your leisure in your joy and in your sorrow and your laughter as well as in your tears until that day when we meet the Lord face to face and cry holy 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 to the Lord of hosts until that day my brothers and sisters go in peace go in love go in joy go in the lessons Jesus gives us from lockdown and may the God of peace love and joy go with you now and forevermore in Jesus name amen I'll see you later in this week. Let's rise together, family. In Jesus' name, amen.